for 10 years that's what he did there's actually at one point there was a group of ulama sitting and this man came up and he asked a question and Imam Al-Ghazali was literally sweeping nearby and he heard this man ask this question and none of the ulama could answer so Imam Al-Ghazali saw this man and he was worried that he wasn't getting the guidance that he needed so he went up to the man and he told him you know the answer to your question is this and the man looked at me started laughing and he said, all those ulama couldn't answer me and you think I would believe you? You're just, you're just a janitor. And uh, somebody from the thing called him over and he said, what are you going on about? And he said, he said that the answer to the question was such and such. And they all, all these men were amazed at that. And he said he had to leave. He left at that point again. Because he just didn't want any to know who he was and that was his state so at the age of 48 he goes back partly because he missed his family and he wanted to see his daughters but also because he had accomplished what he set out to do and during that time he wrote the Ihya al <laughs> so he goes back and he did not want to go back to teaching and he actually went back to Nisapur, he went back to Tuz, to his city, and he set up a little place, and then he, because the ruler there imposed upon him to teach, he started giving some public classes, but he basically had just private teaching, and during that time he wrote Ayyuhal Walad, and he wrote a few other books during that time. But one of the scholars at that time who had known him, Abd al-Ghafir al-Farisi, said that I remembered what an arrogant and pompous person he was. And I'd heard that his character had completely transformed, and I didn't believe it. So I wanted to go see. And he said that he went, and he watched him, and he said, initially I thought that he was just faking it. Can يَتَكَلَّفُ تَوَاضُعًا That he was just faking this humility. And he said, as I watched the man, I began to realize that he was completely transformed as a person. And so Imam al-Ghazali wrote this book, Ihya Ulum ad and in this book, what he did was he joined the esoteric and the exoteric aspects of Islam. He did something nobody had done before, which is he made a book of, of fiqh, like he has Bab al-Tahara, he has Bab al-Zakah, Bab al-Siyam. He made a book of fiqh into a spiritual treatise. So instead of learning the formalistic rules of fasting, he was also teaching the secrets of fasting, why you're fasting. So he was teaching the maqasid, the spiritual maqasid of fiqh. And nobody had done that. They'd done it in books, separate books, but nobody had the idea of putting these two together and saying, this is the way you should teach this to people because they have to know why they're doing these things. <laughs> because if they don't know why they're doing them, you'll turn this religion into this formalistic, meaningless ritual in which people don't know why they're doing these things. They don't know what the purpose of it is. So that's what he did. And it's really this incredible contribution to the Islamic tradition. And for that reason, the Ihya was taught all over the Muslim world and really became one of the most important books. Many scholars said that that was really the only book after the Quran that people needed. Many, many scholars have said that. If you look at the Yemeni tradition, like the way they teach in Tarim, the entire tradition is based on the Ihya. I mean, literally, the entire tradition. Imam al-Haddad, all of his books are based on the Ihya ulum ad and on the books of Imam al-Ghazali. So that's his contribution. And people, really, people have no idea. I don't think they have any idea of this man's stature in the history of Islam. But also that he has this incredible honor of being literally the man who saved Islam. 
That is who Imam al-Ghazali is. He's the man who saved Islam. And even though Islam is Allah's religion, he protects it, he protects it nonetheless through people. And, and that's the man that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used to do that. And the reason, which is very clear, I think, is because of his ikhlas. And that's really the focus of his entire work, is he is saying, if you should do one thing in your life, it's to get ikhlas. That that's really the whole point, is to get to be sound in your heart. And if you do one thing in your life, you should do that. And all of the accolades that go with life, all of the positions that go with life, all the things that people strive after, what he is saying is all of those things are completely irrelevant if you have not worked on your heart. Not only are they irrelevant, they will destroy you.